Welcome to Electro Online. Now let's take a look at the atmosphere of the Earth. Again, when we study planets and moons, the atmosphere plays a big role in understanding what must be going on the surface of the planet and whether or not there's a possibility that, that life may exist. The atmosphere, of course, plays a big role in the fact, in the possibility of life existing. The primary components in the atmosphere of the Earth are nitrogen, number one, 78.1% .1 of the Earth's atmosphere is nitrogen. Oxygen is number two at 21%, so combined, nitrogen and oxygen makes up 99% of our atmosphere. Almost an entire percent also goes to argon. Argon is a noble gas, doesn't react with anything, and there's a surprising amount of argon in the atmosphere, 0.9%, which basically makes up the entire atmosphere. Now, the next component in the atmosphere is carbon dioxide. It's at 0.04%, and of course, carbon dioxide is in the news a lot because it's one of the greenhouse gases. And you can see that carbon dioxide only makes up a very small percentage of the total contents of the atmosphere. Water vapor also can be found in the atmosphere, but the amount varies a lot with where on the Earth you are. If you're in a dry climate, above in like a desert environment, it is much less than 1%. If you go into regions like above the oceans and near tropical regions, it can be a lot more than 1%. So the amount of water vapor in the atmosphere does depend upon location on the Earth. Since the rest of these gases already make up 100% of the atmosphere, there's some trace amounts, there's also some methane and so forth in the atmosphere, but the whole atmosphere being 100%, where do we get the extra 1% for the um, water vapor come from? It turns out that water vapor will actually displace the other gases. If there's 1% water vapor, there only will be 99% of the remaining gases, so it'll actually displace the other gases, it'll be less of the others. It's kind of an interesting situation. Now, water vapor is actually our primary greenhouse gas, and we'll do another video on telling the difference about how water vapor holds back the heat versus carbon dioxide. But the primary reason why the atmosphere is so important, not only because us land animals and us people need to breathe oxygen in order to stay alive, oxygen is needed for the processes, the chemical processes that, that go on in our bodies, we need protection from the harmful rays that come from space. The most harmful rays that come from space are gamma rays, x-rays, and high energy UV. Even the low energy UV can be quite detrimental to the, our survival unless we were protected from those rays. It turns out that nitrogen and oxygen, since they're diatomic molecules, a nitrogen molecule is two nitrogens joined together, an oxygen molecule is two oxygens joined together, and it turns out when gamma rays, x-rays, and high energy UV radiation enters our atmosphere, they bounce up against these molecules, these nitrogen oxygen molecules, and the energy contained in the photons of UV, X-rays, and gamma ray radiation will actually break the bonds in the molecules, and thus the energy is absorbed, and those rays do not, do not reach the surface of the Earth. If they did, life would not be possible on the Earth. So we owe our existence to the fact that nitrogen oxygen can actually hold back gamma rays, X-rays, and high energy UV. Unfortunately, Low energy UV cannot be held back by these two gases because the bonds are too strong and cannot absorb the energy contained within low energy UV. Luckily, there's another layer, and here I have a little schematic here. There's another layer, very thin layer, at about 30 kilometers above sea level where we have ozone. Ozone is an O3 molecule where you have three oxygen molecules bonded together into a single molecule. And when low energy UV bounces up against ozone molecules or O3 molecules, those bonds are a little bit weaker than the bonds of nitrogen and oxygen, diatomic oxygen, and therefore the low energy UV is also absorbed by the ozone layer in such a way that almost none of the UV gets through to the surface. Just a small amount, probably less than 1% of all the UV actually makes it through to the surface of the Earth, and because of that we still experience sunburns even with that very small amount making it through the atmosphere. The atmospheric pressure on the Earth is 101,300 pascals. What does that really mean? Well, it means 101,300 newtons of pressure for every square meter. Converted to pounds per square inch, it's 14.7 pounds per square inch. That's actually quite a bit. And the reason why we don't seem to be affected by it, because our bodies, not only does the pressure act from the outside, 
that pressure is also on the inside of our bodies pushing back so it's like a window doesn't get broken because the outside atmospheric pressure because there's also inside atmospheric pressure pushing back keeping things at equilibrium so our bodies are not affected by it although that is a lot of pressure 14.7 pounds per square inch what determines if a planet actually does end up in an atmosphere for example why does the earth have a very thick thick atmosphere 14.7 pounds per square inch of atmospheric pressure versus Mars having less than 1% of Earth's atmospheric pressure. Well, there's two factors here. One of them is size, and the other one is the temperature on the surface of the planet. First is size. Earth is a fairly big planet relative to all the terrestrial planets. It's the biggest of them all, and it therefore has a large gravitational pull, a large gravitational force pulling back, keeping the atmosphere from escaping to space. All the molecules in the atmosphere move at a fairly rapid pace, but if they can't reach the escape velocity, they can't escape the gravitational attraction of the Earth. So that's one of them. Second is temperature. If the planet is far away from the sun and the temperature is very low, the molecules move much more slowly, they're less likely to reach escape velocity. But if the planet is very close to the sun, like Mercury, where the temperatures are very high, any molecules, any gas molecules near the surface will move at very high speeds and are much more likely to escape the gravitational pull of the planet in the case of Mercury, since Mercury doesn't make it either on size or on temperature. It is too small of a planet and it has too high of a temperature. Mercury does not have an atmosphere at all. Just small trace amount of gases, which is basically the captured sun, solar particles in the solar wind that reach Mercury. Let's take a look here on our diagram. Notice that space starts at about 65 miles above the surface of the Earth, which is about 100 kilometers. Whenever they do space travel, they mean they've made it to a height of at least 65 miles or above. The atmosphere continues beyond that range. Matter of fact, several hundred miles above the surface of the Earth, but at that point, the atmosphere is so thin, it's barely noticeable, barely there. Human habitation really ends at a height of about 15,000, 16,000 feet, which is about three miles or five kilometers above the Earth's, uh, the, um, I should say, uh, sea level. Couldn't think of the name, but about three miles or five kilometers above sea level. At that elevation, the atmospheric pressure has dropped about 55% of what it is at sea level. So people can live under those conditions, and not very many of us do, but there are some villages in the high mountains, in the Andes Mountains in South America, where people live at those elevations. If you go higher than that, for example, when you climb Mount Everest, Mount Everest is a mountain that's 29,000 feet high, about 8,800 meters. And when you get to that elevation, the atmospheric pressure is only 25% of what is at sea level, and therefore people can no longer live. Anytime the climbers get above 26,000 feet, about 8,000 meters of elevation, that's called the dead zone, and you can only live there without extra oxygen for so long before your body gives out and before your lung capacity gives out. Safe habitation, typically below 16,000 feet for human habitation. The entire world's population lives in that small little sliver of atmosphere at an elevation of below 15 or 16,000 feet. That's our place where we can be safe from the harmful effects of space from the UV radiation, X-ray radiation, and gamma-ray radiation. It's a good thing that atmosphere is there. Without it, we wouldn't be here.